Ladies and gentlemen, it is the Municipal Man coming at you from deep inside the ISO booth. Uh, today is going to be short and sweet, and we are looking at a niggling little problem that a lot of BeatBuddy users have come across, and it involves MIDI mapping. And that means the mapping arrangement of the different parts of the drum sets that you're using. So here's the problem. You create a beat in your DAW, your software, like Logic or GarageBand or Reaper or whatever it is you're using, and then you export it and carry it over to your beat buddy and you put it in, and you notice that some of the beat is not there. That means that perhaps the kick is not uh, heard, or the snare sound is different, or I don't know, maybe the cowbell is missing, whatever it is. And the reason this happens is that the different drum sets are not organized or mapped the same way uh, according to the MIDI numbering system, uh, because you can actually arrange those as you like. Now, most of the drum sounds are standardized, and that is helpful, but not always. So what happens is you must uh, go back into the DAW, nudge the notes around, try to find the right location for the sound that is missing, export it back out, hope that it works, and if not, you might have to go back and forth two or three times, and that can be a real time waster and certainly very annoying. And what we want to do is really improve that workflow. What would be best is that if what you were listening to while you created or arranged your beat was the output that you were going to hear in the beat buddy. And that way you would avoid this problem. And that would improve your workflow and save you a lot of time. Now I've certainly come across this problem and I've been using the beat buddy for years and I spend a lot of time arranging beats on uh, in a DAW in Logic and then exporting it. And up until now I've just been dealing with it. I just go back and I fix it and I sort of work by intuition at this point. Uh, but it certainly is a problem um, in terms of making it aggravating. And we want to avoid it. So there is a way to do it, and we're going to look at that today. And so let's get into it. Okay, so I'm using Logic, and you can see I've got an assortment of drum sets over here that I can choose from to arrange on. But I know that... Uh, these are just approximations of what the beat buddy might sound like. Um, so I know what I'm arranging is not going to sound as the, uh, the same as the output. So it doesn't really matter which drum kit I choose, except for the fact that I would like to come as close to my expected outcome as possible. And you can view the names of those drums, and as they relate to the piano keyboard here, uh, by going to view and highlighting drum names, and then you know which parts of the drums are showing. Most of these are standardized. For example, C1 is usually a kick, uh, I would say almost always. Sometimes there's a second kick sound here, but sometimes there isn't. So if you put it on the wrong um, note, it won't output the same way you expected. And then you'll notice there are a bunch of different snare sounds and those may or may not correlate to the drum set you're using in the Beat Buddy. And as I scroll through some of these drum sets, you'll notice these drum names might change. Okay, and that's just showing that they're not all mapped the same. Uh, some of them are the same and some of them are not. There's a little more to this. For some strange reason, the uh, scale here that we're looking at, the names of the drums and the keyboard, don't show the MIDI numbers, which would actually be nice, because then we could know uh, what the output drum set MIDI notes were mapped as, and that would help us. It would at least improve one thing. So what we're going to uh, look at here is this numbering system. So here's something I pulled offline, and uh, you can find these online. And... You can see here they're just showing the MIDI numbers as they relate to the um, piano keyboard. And you'll notice C1 is the kick, and that's number 36. And that's the most uh, common po starting point. So one thing you could do is go to your drum kit, your drum kit here, 
C1 you know is number 36, and you can count your way up, 37, 38, 39, and if you know what the corresponding drum set has as its layout, then you'll know what to expect, but obviously that's going to make uh, your head spin because that's a lot of, well, memorization, and uh, it's kind of an annoyance, and you don't want to have to do that. If you want to find out what the drum set that you want to use is mapped as, you can see it in the BeatBuddy Manager. Okay, so if I go to Drum Sets, up here in the File folders, I can hit Open Drum Set, and it will allow me to open and look at one of my BeatBuddy drum sets that I have. Let's take a look at the Standard Pro. The Standard Pro is a pretty large drum kit. It's got most things. But you can see the MIDI numbering system here. 33 is the metronome, 36 is the kick, like we talked about. And if you scroll through them, you'll, you'll see those numbers. Okay, so you can really drive yourself crazy trying to memorize all of that. Uh, but that is one way to uh, avoid this MIDI mapping problem, because if you know what the output drum kit is mapped as, then you can arrange in your software accordingly. Uh, but that would require a lot of uh, mental work that you probably don't want to do. All right, so let's take a look at how this may manifest. If I've got a beat here. But I'm going to take this note here, this open hi-hat, I'm going to move it around a bit. Okay, I have one beat using the open hi-hat, another beat using the clap, and I'm going to go down below here uh, to this rim shot snare. Sounds a little weird, but uh, it's just for demonstration purposes. And let's see what happens in the Beat Buddy Manager as we s use those beats with our Beat Buddy drum sets. Most of them work out okay. Uh, there are a few variations. So if I look at the uh, vintage Ludwig here, sounds okay. Ride bell, okay, I choose that instead. Aha! So that rim shot at the end of this beat is not on this drum kit. So in the jazz kit, that open hi-hat is actually playing as a um, cross stick. Okay, that sounds okay. Okay, and again, that rim shot is missing. Okay, you guys are smart, you get the point. If I can just interrupt here for a quick break to announce something that I'm super excited about, it is the launch of municipalman.com coming in October 2020. If you go to municipalman.com, click on store, follow the hairstyle for your favorite genre, you will find a growing selection of songs and beats that come beat buddy ready and they're starting at just two bucks. A fast and secure payment, an immediate download and you are good to go. So here's an explosion because everyone loves explosions. explosions. So that's a, a, a niggling little problem that a lot of people who are arranging for their Beat Buddy come across. Um, it can be a little bit uh, maddening and aggravating, um, and it certainly wastes time, and we want to try to avoid that. So there is one method, and this was actually, uh, I was turned on to this by one of my subscribers, so I really appreciate that because it turned out to be a real time saver. And uh, you're going to need a device here. Let's take a look at it. So Yamaha makes a um, Bluetooth-enabled MIDI adapter. This adapter just connects to your MIDI splitter cable that comes with your Beat Buddy, and you plug it in like this. Okay, And then when you plug it in, you'll see a flashing light. And you can pair it with your computer, and this will allow you to output through your Beat Buddy and then you can hear the final product while you are arranging. So this avoids any of these issues we just talked about. The only thing is this little device is a little bit expensive. <coughs> price gouge, <coughs> price gouge. But you know, how many times are you gonna buy this in your life, I suppose? Okay, so you're gonna go to your 
audio MIDI setup if you're using a Mac computer. I don't know where those are on Windows. I'm sorry, I don't use Windows. You'll have to find it. Okay, and you go to Window, and you're going to hit Show MIDI Studio. And I'm going to hit Bluetooth there, and this window will pop up. And this will show my Bluetooth device. There it is, and I'm going to hit Connect. And it is connected. Works quite seamlessly. Now, if I want to use it on a track, I have to use an external MIDI track. So if I hit Create, you'll see the external MIDI option. and it will show up here, and you've got the right one, and you hit Create, and there it is. Okay, so let's hear this uh, drum set um, played through the Beat Buddy drum sets, and you'll notice the sound change. Uh, let me just turn up this channel a bit. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that was the jazz kit. If I change the drum set on this song, you'll notice the sound changes. So that's the vintage Ludwig. I don't know, let's hear it on the dance kit. That'll be interesting. Okay, so there you go. So now I know what the output is going to sound like and that can be a real time saver. Now there is one caveat to this setup. The way this works is that it is using the Beat Buddy as the output, not your computer. So you can't record with this arrangement and get the drum sound out of the Beat Buddy onto your computer and use it in the software. It's actually going out the other way through your Beat Buddy. So it's taking the MIDI information from your computer and playing it on the Beat Buddy itself and then using the output there. So you actually have to hear it uh, through the Beat Buddy's output, which might be in your mixer or something like that. The only reason you can hear it now is because I have the Beat Buddy output going into my uh, interface, into the computer. So I hope this is going to save some of you from some wasted time and aggravation, because I certainly came across this issue since I started using my Beat Buddy a number of years ago. And up until now, I've just been dealing with it by... Um, sort of knowing uh, by intuition uh, what's going to work and what's not going to work. But now, uh, you know, I find this to be a real time saver and it really helps a lot with just knowing what the arrangement is going to sound like because I spend a lot of time creating beats for my beat buddy. Anyway, folks, thanks for tuning in. Please do all the usual favors of subscribing and liking and maybe adding some notifications. And we'll see you next time.